everybody, how's it going? Justin the Red Island Shaver, welcome to another edition of Outside the Den. So, for this week, we are doing a brief introduction to straight razors. Have the coffee going, as usual. And Alright, so we're going to get right into this. So, straight razors. If you guys have been following along on my videos, and um, on this series, and you've looked at all the things available to buy, purchase... You probably joined a couple of Facebook groups. You've amassed probably an ungodly collection of stuff. And you've noticed the shave of the day posts and you see a lot of straight razors. And you may have the opinion that, you know, no, I'm happy with my DE razors. I'm pretty satisfied. I'm not going to get into straight razors. Well, sorry to say the odds are against you. Chances are you probably will get at least one. It's the natural progression in the wet shaving hobby. So I brought down a few of my collection here. Um, and not really to show off what I have, but more, more or less because I, I realized when I was thinking about doing this video, and by the way, the suggestion for this video came from uh, Lee over at Nomeo Shaves. So thank you, Lee. Um, the uh, I realized I have a whole kind of plethora of different razors and different categories, which makes for a good video because I can show uh, the different things because, well, I have them. So we will get started. So first up I'm going to show is just a straight razor. So here it is. A straight razor basically is comprised of the scales, then you have the blade, and the tail, and then your pivot pin is here, and then this pin keeps everything together at the front, and then there is a wedge that keeps it gapped so the blade can uh, go into the scales without nicking the scales, which will hurt your edge, and then you have the blade itself. So this particular one is a 6 8 which is basically the size of the blade from the spine down to the cutting edge. This is a round point. As you can see, the point of the blade is round. These are generally a good starter razor because the, the, the uh, toe of the blade, which is up here at the point, is rounded, less likely to cut yourself. Then down here, we have the heel of the blade and then there is the shoulder of the blade right there this is called the blade face your cutting edge is down here and then your spine and then some razors this one doesn't have it but they have what are called jimps up on the back of the tang and that is the tang portion of your blade right there the jimps are basically just to help you grip the razor so this is a typical straight when it's open for shaving you would put two fingers on the top of the tang and then you put a finger on the tail and then the jimps are usually right up in there if they have any and then some have them underneath actually this razor does have the jimps underneath so you can see them there it just gives something for your fingers to grip so this is a round point like I said this is a gold dollar 208 um, Basically, this is every entry-level straight razor. Uh, a lot of people do sell them. The only thing I would suggest but the gold dollars, you buy this from somebody that knows how to hone. And be careful where you're buying your razors from. A lot of times, shave ready does not mean shave ready. And you can't shave with them at all. So I would suggest um, getting involved once again in the Facebook groups. There's lots of guys that sell gold dollars that are shave ready and they are good to go right from the get-go. So that's an example of a round point. Then we have square point, or actually, and, and then you can, you can get these things customized too. So just quickly, I'll show my gold dollar. This is a gold dollar 200. Once again, it's a 6 8 round point. And this one does have the jimps I just noticed on the top of the tang. 
and it has the jimps underneath as well and this one was customized by Randy at First Canadian with the custom acrylic scales and scales are part of the customization process so those are two six eighths round points then you can get into we have French points so this here is a Thayer's Isard Le Dandy does not have the jimps on top has the jimps underneath and this is a French point razor so with the French point there's a little bit of concavity to the front and then it comes down kind of into a square point as you can see there's the concavity right there so it's almost a round point but then it comes down to an edge to a to a square these are good little razors this one's also a six eighths um, acrylic scales on that and then we have the square points and this is my king cutter this one is jimped on the top not on the bottom and this is a example of a square point so the end of the blade is just square now I had this tip muted a bit which basically means uh, Randy when he did the razor he dulled the very edge of the tip so it's not sharp to avoid cutting myself uh, this blade let's see if I can get the etching in here This blade was made in 1900 or 1915, something like that. And this sports wood, um, resin stabilized wood, which is waterproof and will last you a lifetime if you take proper care of it. And then we get into this razor, which is kind of an oddball. I, I don't really have any Spanish points. This one is kind of a hybrid of a Spanish and a barber's notch. This is also a 6 8 But as you can see, it has the notch there. And this tip actually came out quite a bit more. So it was it was kind of a hybrid of a Spanish point and a barber's notch. The, the barber's notch is actually usually a little bit more pronounced. The Spanish point, I guess this one probably is a Spanish point. Because the, um, the Spanish points, they flare out quite a bit on the nose. Or on the, the toe. Uh, Randy muted this one as well, so I didn't remove my ear. And let's see if this one is jimped. No, the tang is smooth on the top and the bottom. But this razor, I find, is actually quite easy to hold. It, it's... It's quite a hefty razor. This is some fairly old steel with uh, heavier wood scales. And this one is actually quite easy to hold on to. So that's a Spanish point. And then we have the good old Celebrated. This is some Sheffield steel. These are highly sought after. No jimps on this one either this one is also a square point and being a weight and butcher it also has a slight smile to the blade so almost looks like it's smiling a little bit on the cutting edge these are quite easy to use and this is sported in the original ivory scales which I mean if you can find ivory or bone or horn that's in good condition uh, definitely a good razor to have so I'm going to put those back in their container. I have my, this is my beautiful, beautiful straight razor storage. I have a uh, storage little three drawer thing that I keep them all in. Some paper towel on the bottom just to keep them from getting scuffed up when they're all resting in here. Ready for their next use. So that's a quick look at the razors themselves. And actually, we'll, we'll go into some grinds here in a minute, too. Um, and then, also for straight razors, you have 
uh, kamisori. So this is the traditional Japanese kamisori. Big thing about these is the grind on them. Uh, the grind on a kamisori is uh, how to explain it. One side shaves better than the other the way these are ground. Traditionally, you're supposed to shave with the letter side out at all times. So it would be this side. So if I was holding it in my hand, I would shave. This is the left side of my face. And or the right side of my face, my right hand, I would shave like this. And then technically, I would go to the other side of my face, still holding it with the letter side out, and then shave like this for a better shave. Um, I'm not that adept at using it. You can use both hands, use it like a regular straight razor. Uh, yeah, you just have to change your angle. But these are the traditional Japanese straight razors. So we'll quickly get into grinds. Um, the big thing about straight razors, a lot of people that get into it will buy some razors. And they could come shave ready, they could be perfect, good to go, sharp as all get out, and they don't shave good for them. And there is reason, it comes down to grind. Um, for me, my beard really isn't that coarse, like my beard hair isn't very coarse, it's just kind of a medium growth. So for me, an, an extra to a full hollow seems to work very good for this type of growth. So if you have medium to light beard growth, you can get away with extra full hollow, or extra to full hollow, or to half hollow, or a hollow ground. So, like this is a, the boker I think is a full hollow ground, the little king cutter. These gold dollars are hollow ground. And, this Wade and Butcher, if I can read what it says. Randy's got it so shiny, I have I can't really read it now. You can read it better when there's a bit of dirt in there. Uh, I believe it's an extra hollow. An extra hollow ground on that. So with the medium to light beard growth, uh, you can get away with a full hollow to extra hollow to hollow. If you have very, very, very coarse beard growth, you're going to want to look for a, a wedge or a near wedge. And basically all that is, is a near wedge or a wedge is basically just a straight blade. There's no concavity in it at all, um, leading down to the cutting edge. It's just the, the and you can look this up. Um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll find a link to um, a picture that, that explains the grinds and I'll put it in the description below. So basically, if, if you look at the end of the blade, from this end, this being a hollow ground, you can see there's some concavity there. You can see how the blade it starts at the spine and it, and it works into the point. Uh, a wedge, there's really no concavity there, it's just straight down. And and it just gives it a more rigid shave and the extra hollow to the hollow there's a little bit more play in the leading edge a little bit more bend so they those don't work very well with very coarse beards so that's one thing to keep in mind if you're going to get into straight razor shaving and that is just be cognizant of your particular type of beard and realize that this, this kind of isn't a one size fits all um, if you have very coarse hair and that's really all there is to say about that aspect of it as far as cleaning these go and maintenance uh, you know that that seems to be a detriment for some people they don't want to get into it really all you need to do is get a good strop uh, I do have a video it's um, maybe I'll link it in the description I'll, I'll go find the video and I'll link it so you can watch it and refresh yourself on it how I strop, I do it a bit different. I do one side of the blade at a time than the other, same as when you're honing it. Um, but really, that's all you need to do. Make sure you dry your blades off good after each shave with a piece of paper towel or toilet paper or whatever have you. Uh, strop it, and then you're good. If it needs to be rehoned, 
don't worry about getting into stones right off the bat. There's lots of guys in the groups that hone them. You can just send it out and get it done. It only costs you a couple dollars and you're good to go. Don't let the, the perceived maintenance aspect of it um, keep you from getting into it if, what you, if it's what you really want. It really doesn't cost that much at the end of the day and it doesn't really require that much more effort. Um, so yeah, so that's really all I have. That's just a quick overview of straight razors. I could literally go on about this all day. Uh, I'm not going to. But anyway, that's all I have for this week. Uh, please join me on the weekend shave video where we're going to use, I don't know, a mystery soap. I'm going to find something in the den and we're going to have a great weekend shave. I, I will tell you, though, it would be one of these blades you've seen here on this video today will be in action for sure. So thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. As always, friends, have a great day and even better shave. We'll catch you on the weekend.